like really personal right now, so I was like, hey, I'm going to teach you all these things, so I'm really going to try to do as good as I can. But I have four different kinds of masks we can do, and I have two basic ones, one male, one female, and then I also have ones that I like to do, I like to make the holes and then make it really detailed. Which are... My uh, bin exploded on the way here, so now I'm trying to reorganize. <laughs> so these are my basic lady masks that I like to do. And I just did like a basic one. So I don't want to embellish it and everything and then too much sway you guys in what you want to do. Because I want this to be a personal experience and you know get everything that you want into it without being like, oh, well, she did this, so I have to do this and this and this. So I let it kind of blank. So this is your lady one, and this is the male one. I like these shapes. It's a little bit wider and it's a longer face. And these are the fancy ones. These ones, you probably will have to do, you have to finish them by yourself because we don't have much time. But these are the fun ones. And if you guys can help afterwards, I have a booth and you guys can come over there and we'll finish them. So. If you want to, uh, you can come back after the five o'clock is over and finish up. And you can just oh, if everybody agrees, you can come back. You'll skip a session and then we can come back. That would be awesome. What do you guys think of that? All right, cool. So you guys can do whatever you'd like to do. Good. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about leather. This is vegetarian leather. And if you don't know anything about leather, when I first started leather, I thought that was the most intimidating thing in the entire world. It's like, I don't want to do this. I go to Renaissance festivals, and like a bracer is going to be $150 at least. So I always thought it was the hardest, most intimidating material to work with. But then I started working with it. It's like, that's not that hard at all. I overcomplicated like crazy, and apparently a lot of people do do that. So I'll show you how simple it is to start. So this is just like a side of a cow, basically. <laughs> this is your double shoulder. This is bench tan leather. I got this from Tandy Leather, leather, and they are also here bending. And they're very, very cheap right now. So if you guys want to do this, I highly recommend going to see that guy. He's awesome. So this is just plain leather. Nothing to do with it. A lot of people try to make leather masks out of upholstery. Like, oh, I cut up this jacket. No one want to make a mask with it. You can't do that. That's already been treated. It's already been tanned, all that stuff. So you need something raw like this. So what you do, I actually don't have white pieces for you. Thanks, Giants. Can everyone see me or do I need to use the scary thing? <laughs> can you guys see me? So far, yeah, can you can see me, good. right? You have to do a detail work. And if you start doing leather stuff, it's very, very, very expensive to start. It's like, oh, I'm going to cut some corners and get, like, instead of the $60 scissors, you can get the $5 scissors. Don't ever get the $5 scissors. <laughs> it is worth getting at least the $20 or $30 ones. You will hate leather working for the rest of your life if you get those. Now, are there specific leather working scissors? Yep. Okay. You can use tin snips. I never used tin snips before until I was on that steampunk show. And I'll never use them again. <laughs> <laughs> I cut my thumb, trying to like, why is it this work? They're not, they're not sharp, are they? The, the they're sharp, but not for the, this is, uh, all right, I have to mention this, sorry. It's, um, this is six, seven ounce leather, and this is what I like to use. And you can get thicker leathers, and they gave us like nine ounce, which is way too thick to get a lot of detail in. So I was making an art piece. So it's like, man, these are not working. And so blood gushed everywhere. And so they didn't give you leather shears? <laughs> Alright, let me, let me tell you this, guys. We're going to have a panel on this tomorrow if you'd like to hear yeah. it. <laughs> Alright. You, you talk a lot, so I'm going to get what I want to say about that show. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, actually, James helped me out a ton with that. Um, they, they, gave, they cut a lot of corners with our tools. With our so, we got 10 snips, or we got the $5 scissors, which literally does not cut anything. You're lucky if that cuts paper. Um, the rotary tool that we used, we usually use, how much is that thing, like $50 for the good one? The normal? No, the rotary tool. Oh, I've never used one. 
Well, what about electric, um, now these electric knives that you cut meat with? It's good for cutting foam. What about leather? I would assume that if you cut leather with it, it would make it explode. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> foam I can see because it's so porous, but this is so dense. And see how it's, this is the veg tan, so this is really smooth and nice on this side and really raw on this side. So if you did something like that and it wasn't a smooth cut, this will start fraying everywhere. And that's not, that's not a fun experience at all. And we do have tools to fix that too, and uh, I'll show you guys that in a minute. So, to mold it, you just wet the front side. This is the plants and water that you get the cheap ones because I'm broke. <laughs> You spray it just a little bit. Now, a lot of people like to overdo it. If you oversaturate your leather, it's gonna take a really long time to dry. If you're going to do something detailed like this, no. I would like to do it a little bit more saturated on the top, but on the bottom, not so much because if you mold it, you put it down, it's gonna start flattening out and getting kinda yucky. And then you have to go back, work with it, flatten out, go back, work with it. But you do have to do it with the smaller stuff, but it'll eventually work itself out. So don't overdo it. You want it to change color. And you can see the water soaking up in there. Can you do that on this thing? And that's on the tan side? Yeah. yeah. On the, you know, it's, it's on the skin the, side. On the, on the rough side? No, that's the flesh side. The skin side, the surface side. Okay. Flesh side. The flesh side. You really flesh realize side. you're working with flesh when it's like raw yeah. in your hand. It's like, this is skin. I this mean, is gross. If push came to shove, you could eat it and take sustenance from it. That tastes terrible. Leather and rats. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. So I actually. <laughs> I do spray both sides. I do the back twice and the front, like four, about four squirts. And if we have more time, I would give you guys a piece, but we'll do it. I'll, I'll just teach you while we uh, while we do this. But that's all you do. You wet it down, and then you can start molding it. And it'll stay like that. It'll dry that way. That's all you need is water. A lot of people think it's like, oh, it's chemicals. It's this. It's that. It's not. It's water. That's what's in your water bottles. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, a lot of people think it's like, oh, it's yes. not either. <laughs> Don't try it. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's, that's the next class. Absent. <laughs> That'd be great. I would be the best teacher ever if I could switch out with absinthe. Right. <laughs> so why would you want to waste it? Yeah, no. You're the math class. You're gonna watch it on YouTube. Yeah, right. Why? <laughs> find her. Uh, find her later. She has the absinthe very tonight. You're gonna be my best friend. <laughs> oh, pardon my face. I was wearing a mask earlier. Stop, don't even. <laughs> <laughs> so, like this. And this, you leave it like that, it's going to stay like that. Forever. Um, you can also put, I, I like this great stuff. I don't know what you like to use. Your laminate. I don't use leather shame anymore. Why? Well, because you do a different thing than I do. Oh. Yeah. We'll talk about that some more during our beginning weather program. And there's going to be another class on leather working, beginning leather workers, which is actually a really good class to take because then you'll get you're, you're learning how to mold leather here, and there you get to learn everything else. <laughs> Are we tooling in that? I don't know what we're doing. Uh, no, that's that's the advanced one. That we're doing that. There's also a advanced one. Yeah, I didn't bring any of my stuff, so I was all. Anyway, <laughs> I'm judging you. So that's it. That's all you need. I have a question. What's up? So if you have leather that's dried and crinkled, can you let it straighten out? If you don't laminate it, and you have to, now to get a lot of detail, you do have to get it soaked, and you do have to come back, and you do have to start working on it again. So it's tedious. It's definitely tedious. But if you mess up, and you're nice to it, sneak work like Okay, I have the difference. I've seen YouTubes on how people make their masks and they like, oh, you just mold it to your face and you stick it in an oven. That is the worst absolute thing you can ever do to leather. Now, leather is skin. Would you want to go outside and bake in Florida heat for three or four days? That's going to shrink up your skin and crack it and ruin it. It's the same thing with leather. So it will get it very, very dry, it will start cracking, and then it will become very, very hard and brittle. 
So heat guns, you have to be very, very careful with them. I don't recommend it for people that are new to it. Okay. Hair dryers, do you really far away, but it's not worth it. I found a radiant quartz heater, you know, the ones that have the, the glowing tubes in them. Yeah. You can hang it on a rack as long as it's far away from it. Because it's just infrared. Because it's real uh, kind of like Lower intensity. I never even heard of that before. That's a new word for me. A radiant quartz heater? Ether powered radiant quartz. That's scary. Practice. You're saying scary words. <laughs> <laughs> Recombobulator. So, along with my explosion, I lost my uh, my art book. So, I'm going to draw these out for you guys. I have the templates. Which ones would you guys like? So, with these basic ones, you can embellish them. I have all of my tools and everything like that, so you can put spikes on there, you can put rivets or grommets or anything like that, too. But it will be time consuming. But how much time do we get after five? Um, it's kind of on Wednesday tonight. There's nothing else scheduled. But after this session, there's the Archangel web series thing with the I mean, she's in here. She's not here. Oh, who is the guy? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the costuming and we're talking about the how to put it together and then we'll be hearing more about the first semester. Mm-hmm. And that's the mm-hmm. mm-hmm. tomorrow's thing where we see so that they're going to unveil the latest episode. Mm-hmm. The last, they're also the last session tomorrow before the big uh, bar fight and things. So, Cool. So, yes, tomorrow night. It's not, there's nothing here. So, so there's so we a web series after this, and then after the web series is done, just sit down, you just come back and we'll finish this. Oh, perfect. Um, is everyone okay with that? Like, the spectators, too. Would you guys like to come back so I can slow down and be more detailed about everything? Yeah? Everyone's okay with that? Oh, okay. Because that'd be awesome. I don't mind closing down my food. And this meeting is two hours. Today, right now we're in the four o'clock. Three o'clock. And it's at six. So you got to come back at seven. That's right. Seven o'clock? Is that fine, you guys? Is that okay? Because I would like to get as much detail as possible so you guys can walk away with the full experience. And these are very basic that I just did, and I purposely did not color them all the way because I wanted to show you guys how to dye things. Are we missing one? Yeah, there's, there was somebody here. Potty brain. I was sitting right there. Oh, okay. No. So somebody purchased a Nancy pattern. Aw, so hopefully they can come I back around later. I was late, but I didn't talk about me. Oh, come here! Red, here. Oh my goodness, you're so adorable! Isn't that great? Where's the best person? Right over here. No. What's this? Come around! Now everyone can look at you. <laughs> oh, there's a costume contest tomorrow night. It's like so super low key, and I'm gonna have some index cards. You just write on there what you want us to say about it. Well, it's not gonna and be low key we'll, now that you told everybody. We'll have a bar here <laughs> and the and the fashion show, and the bar, and then there's gonna be a band, with some music, and then and then the can can dance, and then a stage bar fight, and this all comes with this. So awesome. Anyway, who's gonna that? You're making me look good, right? Here's another fun thing that I thought would be just fun for you guys to uh, to use. This is called a crocodile. cow. It's crocodile print. Not real, otherwise this would be like seven thousand dollars. <laughs> it's just printed in on a cow. So this actually adds some really, really cool texture to your mask. Now if you flatten this out completely, it's gonna have holes because this stamp is really, really deep. You're not no one's gonna see it, only you will. Why? <laughs> but this is a really, really cool thing, and if you want like a dragon costume or something like that, then you can use that. How did you do? <laughs> See, there you go. And that's only, for, like, uh, what is that, James? Three to five ounces for those proper cows? Yeah. Now, is that something you have to put on top of the other leather? No, no. no so you can you'll, just use that. It'll like just that. be a, a thinner one. And I like to use that mask when people have glasses. Because you can mold that perfectly to your face and put your glasses over it if you don't mind looking a little nerdy. I do it all the time, but queen of nerds, so. So that's a step you use under the glasses? I like to use that one, yeah. 
That one you can thin out. It's really thin leather, but it still keeps its shape. And it's cool, it's textured, and you have so much depth that goes into that, and you put your glasses over it, you don't really notice your glasses. Obviously, they're there, but it wouldn't be so obvious if I was to do... You put your glasses over it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey guys, how's it going? You know what I would do? I would take old glasses, and I think you can. It's kind of hot glue to the old glasses. So, um, hot glue and leather sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. The outside, that smooth part, does not work. I've done it with just, you know, the masks that you buy, like Hobby Lobby and the Oh, right, right, right. And then for, for a mask, you know, like, you know, you had to have a mask for a ball or something. Mm -hmm. It's worked, but, you know, usually when you get it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've even poked holes on the sides up here and just, just set them in there. I have them found a little bit more. But, um, yeah, you can take full lenses, mm -hmm. and then, um, not context, but James, what's the, what glue do you use for leather? Barge cement. Barge cement. Same as what they use for shoe soles. It's very, yeah. very good. And it's flexible. It's, it's very good. flexible, yeah. Where do you get that? Sandy Leather. Sandy. Um, the guy here might even have it. I told him he's going to be my best friend today. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can use my discount, too. I don't know. Oh, see, she's going to go the thing for it. Yep. Yeah. So, um, we're going to decide which line we going to use. Yes. And then I'm going to draw it out for you. And I'm going to measure your temples. So this is going to fit perfectly to your face. Other people could wear it, but it'll be a little awkward on because this is going to be specific towards you. See, that's the my face, and that doesn't fit your face at all. These are nice. And then we also have a simple one that you can decorate and do cool things with it. But, like, you can turn out, like, a hat. You can put some cool, those are called dots, and I have tons of dots. I have brass, silver, copper. That will be able to do later tonight, because we don't have time. Or you can do the super detailed ones with uh, the holes in there. So up to you guys. Do you guys know what you want? Do you guys have an idea? I wanted to get enough options in there to cover all grounds, so. All right, I'm going to start taking orders. Look at me, I'm a waitress. Who's listening to 311 right now? You? No. It's coming from my pocket. That's coming from your pocket. Oh my god, it's You're so such ready. a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Turn off your phone! No, it's not even that. It's so getting detention. What happened? No, for real. Like, it just decided it was. You're supposed to keep your tats on him. That's your job. You said to sit up here. Sit up here and be good girl. I totally. Which one would you like? But did everything. <laughs> the one? Yeah, but Apparently, your. I but did everything on your my pants. Your pants are somewhere. butt bonded or bonded? Yes. Yeah. What would you like? Uh, pink. Okay. <laughs> Those can get pretty awesome. Actually, I think it's happening now. What? All right, so we're gonna um, start making these templates for you guys. If you have any other questions. Please feel free to ask James or I. So, what would cause some parts of uh, a piece of leather to take dye less than another part of your piece of leather? Um, it could be saturation. Um, you, those sponges that I have, they sell daubers at Tandy Leather and they're wool. If you ask anybody at Tandy Leather, what? Which one's this? Is the That's the male one. Um, I think we only need one male. Hang on, time out. I need three of those. Three. Wait, I thought we had more than that. We had four Cracker Cow? What's your address? Oh. I kept track. I was listening. But if you ask anybody at Tandy Leather what they use, no one ever uses those daubers and they're expensive too, and they're only one time use. Um, they use sponges. These are fancy sponges, but I always use the dollar sponges. Yeah. Those things are fantastic. So um, it could be your saturation. It could be, if you look, I mean, this is skin. It's just like your own body where it's like, oh, I have a blemish here, or it's always kind of textured there. Mm -hmm. You really feel. Yes, please. But, uh, so, where was I at? I was saying words, right? <laughs> okay, so you have blemishes, or like you have a dry spot, something like that. Your 
your cow, your leather is going to be like that also. So there could be some marred spots. If you go ahead and dye it, sometimes a little spot won't take. But usually that's, you can't use the edge of this. This is no good. This is where they clamp it down to pull it, to tan it, and dry it. This is yucky. This, this can take a little bit of dye, but not a lot. And see how it's all crinkled. This is just garbage. So when you're buying your leather, keep that in mind, you can't use all this. Unless you want an icky product. <laughs> but even if you, if you guys want to take a look at this stuff, I don't know if this is like what we pass it around, this is a lot of stuff. There are going to be blemishes on there. You can get one without blemishes on it, but that is super expensive. And if you're like me, you can't afford that! So there's nothing you can do to like buff out the blemishes? So or anything? Um, not really. You can try to play with it, but if you look at this, it looks like the inside of it. So it didn't take the veg tan. See, like, something like that? It looks like that. You can't really fix it. You can, like, wash the pastel soap a little bit to make it absorb a little bit better. But I wouldn't... I just do that routinely because I grew up on a horse farm and we did that routinely. What, what did you do? Pastel soap. Like steel like soap? Yes, steel. Yes, steel. Yes, steel. Oh, steel. steel. So just plain, get it in any tack shop, and it does kind of open the pores. And we would always do that with mm -hmm. Lexol, you know, it oil it up. And you could do that, it's not going to erase a brand or, right. you know, a real blemish, but it does kind of help it smooth it out. Smooth it out, yeah, it takes it by okay. slightly more. Another um, that's thing, good. yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Sorry. I never, I never knew that. Never Horse farm, you love your leather. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's awesome. Um, also, if you do have a little blemish, I don't recommend if you're going to be selling these because I mean you want perfection in your pieces. If you're making it for yourself, it's easy to dance around that. So if you dye it, if, especially if it's a dark color, you're not going to really see it unless you touch it. And it's only like small itty bitty pieces, not going to be like a big old honking spot. And if it is, if it didn't take dye and it's streaky, that means you applied it incorrectly. I like the blemishes. I think it looks like backstory. Yeah! We leave it out in the garage and let it get ruined. And my mother's like, oh, let's put this one It's the good stuff. <laughs> two years for two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Two years? To, and you did your own tanning? No. Gosh, in my dreams. No, we just. Like this, okay. Yeah, just to get some character to it. Yeah, I, I know a guy who actually he sells his pieces that are more with the brand on it. I don't know if I already yeah, have mine out. I have, you'll see it on later. You'll, you'll always see. have one on yours, so it's just like you you know it's a cow. And all of uh, Tandy's leather come from the, uh, the meat industry. Oh, there it is. So they're not killing cows just for the leather. They are using the rest of the animal. They do that a less than that. Okay. Now, when you go to paint them, um, I know that you've got like leather paint, leather dyes up here. Yep. Can you use other things like acrylic dyes or uh, acrylic paints? Yeah, I was actually going to talk about that, but I'm glad you asked. Do you have the scissors? No, oh, right there. They're under the. So, I used to use acrylic, but I overdid it. If you make a really, really thick paint, it's going to crack. Now, if you do a thinner coat, all the ones that I just showed you guys, that's all acrylic. And it's metallic acrylic. So, if you are careful with it, yes you can. And it will last. So, I'm going to give you guys a piece to play with. Just so you get an understanding of it, feel free to like bend it. You can even make roses with it. All these are are in there, James. What's up? The knives. Right there. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. No. Fine. Are we doing it, guys? I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, one of the leather, the regular one. So you guys can even cut holes in here. Again, it is a tedious process. Be careful with it. It's so sharp, then you're going to cut yourself and it's going to hurt. I think that's the episode I saw where you, got, where you cut yourself in the skin. Did they show that? Yep. They did? Yeah. I cut myself to the bone. 
I tried keeping it a secret. It was really funny. I had, like hid in the back and was like, I think I cut myself really bad. And then I, uh, I looked at it and it's, it looked like Kill Bill the movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I ran to the bathroom and Thomas Willifer's coming out of the other one. And he's like, <gasps> and I took a roll of toilet or a roll of uh, paper towel and just went. <laughs> I didn't even take it apart. It's just used the bowl. And he's like, are you okay? I'm like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and then she comes up to me. Yeah, that was James, just... I cut myself really bad. I said, Carrie Ann, you're wearing a microphone. And you're being heard by six producers right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to tell him, like, all right, dude, I'm really, really hurt right now. But I got the bleeding under control, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> and then, it wasn't the producer, it was the director who came up. He's like, Carrie Ann, did you cut yourself? No. You lied to me right now? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see it. So it was just gosh. It was duct tape, whatever. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I did. So I'm a hockey player. You know, that's what we do. You can't play if you're bleeding. And we always believe. If you're playing hockey, you're going to hurt yourself. So we make our own band aids. Can I borrow one of yeah, that way we're going to cut out for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. My bad. My bad. There you go. Want some blood around that? Back. 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 Go ahead. Uh, can I go to show you guys a little bit about the NASA hat? Don't come on my glass. I don't know where I can see if I'm sorry, I can't hear that far. <laughs> the mask had a thinner bit of leather. Yes. For the top right. <laughs> well, that's just water. Hey, okay. So hey, once you hold it to your face, it's worth it. Well, that you is good. Cool. <laughs> thin leather, thick leather, it's all a good state. You can even get like one, two ounce of leather. That's usually for like purchase or something, and that's good. And that's because it's the raw leather. The vegetarian leather. The vegetarian Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Always get vegetarian leather if you're going to do any kind of molding. Would you like to mold this stuff? You're hiding. Oh, that's what smells good. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. This is a sharing class. Who <laughs> 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 wants some crocky cow leaves? Like, like what? Like, 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 so like, the band is here. Oh, that's right. Um, that's a, like, there's crap, like chrome tanning. There's there's a bunch of different kinds of tanning, but there's. Do you know the details of this? Straight to people in my section. Listen for our advertisement. Go ahead. I did trade. I was like, I was like, yeah, that's it. Here, I'll trade you. Take it. So what are we? The difference between the different things. It's like okay. it's fine, it's great. Yeah, gotta go all the way to the bottom. What were you asking? I'm sorry. What's the significance of the bed sheet leather as opposed to other tanning methods? Uh, the veg tan you can mold, obviously. Um, veg tan is the only kind you want to use for uh, guns or anything that's going to come in contact with metal, holsters and things like that, scabbards. Um, because chrome tan is tan using chromium salts. Um, and that's how they get the color in there. The great thing about those is the color doesn't really run. So you notice that if you oversaturate it, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, the color doesn't really run from a chrome tan because it's all the way through, but if you let it contact with metal and it gets any moisture so at all, it, it will rust it. I uh, found that out the hard way. So, uh, there's also oil tan. Um, oil tan is good for things like chaps, things that's going to be uh, exposed to the elements. But you can't change the color if it's been oiled. If, if it has been oil tanned or chrome tanned, it's that color is set. There's no there's no changing it. The only thing you can do is if you use metallic acrylic over it. Yeah. So it's but it's not going out. into it. Yeah. It's just laying on top of it. Okay. Big strong man, we need help. What what happened? Uh, y'all have to find somebody. I need to open your drink for you. <laughs> can you untwist it that way? Oh yeah, I'm gonna twist you guys. Some of the basic tools you need to get started, some of the places you can go, some of the different types of leather you can use. Um, so I had like this whole spreadsheet and like a PowerPoint and everything, but those are boring. So, 
<laughs> it's much more interactive. I'm going to read through the slides, and I'm going to hit the slide, and you can look at the slide as I hit the slide. I'm going to read through the slide. There you go. Information. <laughs> um, um, if you are looking to start leather working, you can always go to somebody who has experience doing that if they're willing to share the experience with you because you will get to bypass a lot of um, snags that you run into if you're just trying to wing it. I call those expensive mistakes. Oh my god, yes. Well, they're <laughs> very expensive to get into, so if you mess up something, it's it, sometimes it's ruined and you can't replace it, so it's a very expensive mistake. So. Um, for Carrie and I, we get our materials from Tandy almost exclusively. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have everything you'll need. Um, if you are wanting to do the kind of leather work that you see that has like the intricate tooling and stuff like that on it, that's where you're going to want to get your leather because that's that's where you get that kind of leather. It's called veggie tan leather. Um, that's the kind of leather that you call it. Well, some people call it hard leather. You, it's just skin color. It's been tanned. Um, you can mold it. You can carve it. You can dye it and stain it. And do just about anything with it. Right. You just have to make sure that it looks like skin. It's kind of creepy if you've never seen one before, but it's just like, it's a hunk. It's a hunk of a cow. It's like, all right, this is what you use. And I also teach classes, and a lot of people bring in, um, like, uh, pieces of coats, or it's like, I have leather at home, I have this, I have that. Those are already tanned. If you bought it at a store, like, just like, you know, a thrift store or anything like that, and you can't do anything with that unless you're using it as a over piece or something like that. So if you want to dive that, if you want to work with it, you want to tool it, that's not going to work. Yeah. Very first um, leather I actually ever got um, was Hobby Lobby. They have these remnant packs, and uh, I didn't know anything about leather. These these were chrome tan. What chrome tanning is it uses a chromium salt to uh, cure the leather. The problem with that, the great thing about it is the color is very color fast. The color goes all the way through the leather. It's not, you know, um, and it won't it won't bleed out. Um, it's firm. Uh, you can use it for you know a lot of structural things. You can't stamp it. You can't dye it or anything like that. Um, I used some of those for some of the first watches I ever made, and then I tried to use them for a gun holster for my revolver. Only to find out that chrome tanned leather will rust anything metal that you put in it. And I didn't know that. So don't ever use chrome tanned leather. If you're not sure what kind of tanning it is, if it's from Hobby Lobby, it's either garment leather or chrome tanned leather. You will not be able to use it for anything like a holster or anything like that. Armor bits, watches, cups, that's fine. Actually, it's, it's better for stuff like that because you don't have to go through the whole process of you know, cutting it out and dyeing it and, you know, like slicking the edges and, you know, doing right. all that, all the stamping and stuff like that because it's just ready to go. Although, um, they also use chrome tanning for some exotic leathers and that is, you can't really tan your own exotic leather, but they chrome tan stingray and, you know, if you ever touch a stingray, it's kind of like a silky, smooth animal, but after it's chrome tanned, it raises up the uh, cartilage in there and it makes it really, really bumpy, kind of like uh, like porcelain. And that won't rust your stuff. But you usually don't use that in such large quantities and it's not very thick, so it was won't rust everything. Oh, that would be so cool. No, that would do it. I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the tools you'll need. Um, Tandy sells a beginning leather worker kit. Don't buy it. Yeah, you know, don't do that. If you're, if, the only reason I would buy that is if you're interested in actually doing a lot of stitching because it comes with all the stuff to do stitching. And you, if you talk to those Tandy leather people, and usually those are leather workers, they'll tell you not to use these certain tools that come in this kit. It's like, okay, well, yeah, it comes with that, that's cool, but don't use that, use this piece and this piece and this piece instead. Literally half the stuff that comes in that kit. It's just pointless. So, yeah. Um, to start out, if you're if you're just wanting to slap one piece of leather onto another um, and dye it, obviously, all you really need is a good mallet, rivet setter, rivets. Um, if you want to do sewing and stuff, you can get a stitching awl and like something to poke holes and do a leather needle. Um, and you need you know, your dyes, whatever you know, colors of dyes that you want. I use the alcohol-based dyes of feeding. I think they do better than 
just about everything else. You like the... I like the water-based ones. Yeah. yeah. I've had to look at the water-based ones. Did you try the new ones? What new ones? <laughs> there's new, there's new ones. ones. Uh, Tandy comes out with new stuff all the time, and it's always improving. They come out with a new line every single year. So um, talk to your local Tandy guy, and they'll, they'll steer you in the right direction of what you're doing and what you need to do. So they're very, very helpful, but if you guys want to go online, you can you know, take what you have from here and figure that one out. But um, yeah, and a lot of it is trial and error. It's not like, oh, he's going to use that die, I'm going to use it, and it's going to be a ruined piece. It's still going to work. You're just going to find your own niche and what you want and what you like. It's going to be very different. So it's not like, oh, man, well, he likes this one, she likes that one. I don't know which one to get. And you're not going to get a ruined piece. So Yeah, no, it's, it, it's personal preference. Right. Oh, you know, I was going to chime in here, too. Um, in my class yesterday, I was telling people about if they wanted to go get new leather stuff and tools and things, don't cheap out on it. And leather working is very expensive, but it will definitely pay off, especially if you're going to resell things. But they sell a different, you know, different levels of things. You can do box cutters to cut your leather. You can do, they have these red scissors. They have um, all silver scissors, and they have these blue scissors. These red scissors are about $5. It's like, great, five bucks for some scissors. Those are terrible. They're going to hurt you. You're going to cut yourself. You're going to mar your leather. It's going to be fuzzy and terrible, and it's the worst thing in the world, and you're going to hate leather working. But if you spring the $60 for the blue ones, it's a lot more, but it's totally worth it. And you will love your life, and you will love leather working. And it's <laughs> extremely want to give up leather working. Like, what is this? What's happening here? Yeah. And those red ones rusted on me too. They were god. You were probably cutting your own tan leather with them. <laughs> no, they're just garbage. And that's just an example. And they also have the same things with like um, a leather punch. You can go to Hobby Lobby and get like an eight dollar leather punch. I, I gotta say, all right, for real, I, I had one of those for like three years. Oh, like, no, but okay. See, now I got a better one. It's like, where has this been all my life? So, I, well, I know. well, they had them on the show, too, the, the good ones. I'm like, how did they spring for that? But they can't. No, they had the bad ones, and I hurt myself, and they had to spring for the good ones. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They had the red handled ones. Don't get the red handled ones. <laughs> Um, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I have a set that I still use um, after my first set that I got from Hobby Lobby Broke um, at Lowe's. They have, <laughs> oh, yeah, Lowe's. And um, Harbor Freight has some really good ones, too. Leather they have punches. just a rotary punch. And at Lowe's, I think it was like seven bucks. Yeah, same thing at Harbor Freight. They were yeah. great. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the ones that have the replaceable um, tubes. tubes, yeah, those are fantastic. That's when you know it's a, it's a good piece, because then if you use one more often than not, then that one's going to get old, and then you're going to have to replace the entire thing. But if you have the ones that are replaceable, it's like, oh, they use this whole more, then you just get a new tube of replacement tube, and they're like two bucks. So it's awesome. But you using your old so much. <laughs> it's right. too early for this, James. My move. That's our big slapper. Okay, so... Yeah, leather dye, a good cutting tool. I don't, I don't use box cutters for my stuff. I use like a, a pencil style exacto blade, mm -hmm. and uh, that's great for delicate. Yeah, work. I don't like those. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. See, it all depends. It's, it depends on the person. Like, um, I don't like using exacto blades because it's harder for me to cut through. So I use a box cutter. He might be strong and light. He's stronger than me. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very uh, yeah, anyway, cutting tool, something to set rivets with. They, they have like a pack of rabbit rivets with the, it comes with a setter and an end bill, and it's, it's super great for starting out. Um, so you can, and if you're in, you know, like a sponge for dyes, or I don't really use daubers, do you? Oh, I hate daubers. So, um, like a little wool, it looks like a giant Q-tip, and they're, yeah. they're they're horrible. <laughs> they are, and people at Tandy will tell you they're horrible, but they, they sell huge bags of them, and they're expensive. These are horrible buy a 60 pack. Yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> that no leather worker that I know actually uses these, and they have like an entire wall dedicated to these wool daubers. They're garbage. Um, you can, there is only one-time use. 
and they don't provide an even coat. They're terrible. So you can see all these lines and streaks and how many times you went over it. And you can have four layers on there to get you know, your, your even saturation and you still see these lines very, very obviously. So um, I use dollar store sponges, just like a sponge you would use in your kitchen. You cut it up into fours and there you go. And you can even flip it upside down and use that again. I use sponge brushes. Like you get from, they have yeah, those things too. Yeah, yeah a 25 pack at Walmart for like $3. Mm -hmm. um, those are awesome. The only thing about the sponge brushes is the, whatever they're made from, um, which you, if you use them with the alcohol based dye like I use, they'll actually start falling apart after one use. So oh, it's weird. like, yeah, you use it. They get all swollen, like floppy. It's weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> have you ever used a sponge? No, I haven't. I never have. Yeah, I got that as a tip from um, the manager at my tanny, my local right. tanny. Well, the manager at my tanny tried to sell me a 60 pack of wool. Your tanny guy is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's keeping. He's cool. <laughs> yes. Al Stolman used to recommend using a clothes pin with just a piece of sponge. Yeah. Yep. You can totally do that. As, as long as it does a, a, a good job of like, the more surface area you have to apply, the less streaking you're going to have, the better coverage you're going to have. That's, that's the main thing. That's why the daubers suck, is because they're a round fluff ball and they're usually about that big. Yeah, you they're not big at all. And especially, like, if you're doing something that's bigger than like a thin bracelet, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's, it's not going to give you good coverage. You're going to see streaks. Um, so, going from just putting leather together and coloring it. Um, they have, there's, there is a beginning leather carving kit at Tandy, and it is good to have. Yeah, that's it's a good one. It comes with a swivel knife, which is what you'll use to actually do your carving. That you basically will incise in the leather along the line or whatever. You can make designs or whatever like that, and then you take your stamping tools, and you start tapping on it, and it'll give you like swoopy lines and you know, they're really cool. They'll give it a lot of depth. Yeah. Like that's a necessary piece if you're going to have detailed work in your leather working. And um, that's going to be touched on the advanced class, right? Oh yeah. And you're, we're going to have displays? I will be wearing my full set of armor that has it's only all over it. Oh, there it is. So if you guys would like to come to the advanced leather class, um, that's at, it's, that's where there's Teampunk 175. Yeah, right. 5 o'clock. Um, we will have demonstrations of that. That one's at yeah, 5 o'clock. Right. Here. Oh, here? Here. Right here in this very room. I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> so we can show you a demonstration on what he's talking about, um, but that kit is very, very good to have. And it also has instructions in there, too. Mm -hmm. and there, I know some of them have videos. You know what's up, videos? Oh yeah, you wish you had that when you started. <laughs> and when I started, it was nothing like what it is like now. It, well, the, in Nashville, the tanning that, uh, that I always went to, just before they moved locations, they got new management and stuff, but the, the guys that worked there were like the old pros. They, they didn't want to share their secrets. They didn't no, want to tell you to do anything. And it's, it's difficult when you are running into something like that, but you should never be afraid to ask somebody that does know because they, you know, most of the time people are happy to share information with you, mm -hmm. unless they're all pros. Like, oh yeah, they already got everything set, so it's like, why would I want my competition? I think leather working is amazing, and you know, if you want other people to share that same gift as you do, then you should absolutely share that. Um, if you guys, there's a tanny leather that's here at this convention. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, and the, the guy's busy, I will come up there with you. I don't know if you would like to do that too. And we can talk to you about what you need if you have any specific questions or just which to buy and what's the best thing to buy. Um, they do have half shoulders and they're incredible prices. They are $30. So um, normally they're like 60 to 90. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's double shoulders too. I, I didn't even see it. A double shoulder is like, I would say the size of this table, right? Uh, it looks like half a cow. <laughs> Yeah. The front half of the cow. The top side of the cow. The top side of the cow. 
So we can um, steer in those directions. But do you guys have any questions about any of it? Maybe. Actually, I have, I have two that are related. Sure. One, I've got a rather cheap breastplate that I bought for costuming and other things, mm -hmm. but I want to line with leather. What type of leather would be good for that? And then how would I attach it? What type of adhesive would you recommend? Barge cement. Barge what, cement. What's barge? The, what's yeah. the plate made from? Steel. It's steel. Oh, it's steel. steel. I was thinking yeah. it was leather. Can't do no, it's, it's steel. I, I, if it were me, um, I would use a very, like, a three, it, leather comes in different ways. Right. It, it's like one to two, two to three, three to four, et cetera. And yeah. the higher the number, the heavier, the thicker it is. Um, I would use a very thin, right. probably like a, maybe a two to three ounce. Right, okay. like a pulsary leather kind of a thing. Yeah, and I, it, it's get a metal cool. punch or something similar like that. Punch holes through your steel, okay. punch holes through the leather, and then rivet it on there. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I would do too. The, um, leather is skin. If you put a sealer on it, or if you use something like upholstery leather or garment leather, garment leather doesn't breathe. And if you want to not sweat to death, you're going to want to line it with just some veggie tan, <coughs> three ounce leather. Okay, yeah, that's just veggie tan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a tip. This is going to be kind of hard without the. Just a tip. Oh, it's not good. Um, she said awkwardly. Well, stop! <laughs> you called me out. I'm such a turd. <laughs> yeah, let me get this thought out. <laughs> don't. Just don't. I'm done, go ahead. <laughs> um, the inside, fold it in. So you're going to have uh, the outside seam, you know what I'm talking about? Like, say here it is, and then fold it like this, and then rivet it that way. Got it. Okay. Yeah? Okay. But it'll it'll breathe. You'll stay cooler, and it will be secure forever. That's cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. It's following up on that, can you talk about the different kinds of leather and what you use them for? Generally? Oh, you can use leather for anything. So that's kind of a like you can use twelve ounce leather that's like that thick for armor. Yeah. Right, but you wouldn't want to use it, say, for a jacket. No, no. no you can you can get garment sides from Tammy, um, and garment leather obviously similar to what you're wearing. It's pretty flexible. It's lightweight. It, it doesn't breathe. Um, you know, it looks good. It smells good, and it's great for anything that's going to be flexing around a lot. But you wouldn't make like a you know, a shoulder piece out of it because it's going to flop everywhere. Mm -hmm. So something if I was making a shoulder piece or like a set of armor, use veggie tan leather. Um, if you want it to be <coughs> firm. Um, the way I the way I make like I don't boil leather. So a lot of people boil leather when they're doing like SCA and like actual making armor stuff. Because oh, it's I hate boiling. It is. Boiling leather. Leather. Oh, you know that. Nobody else does. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Now that I'm already complaining about, it, I will tell you guys about it. It's, um, <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, once you are more advanced into the into leather working, you have to keep this in mind. If you do boil leather, it becomes this part. If you can use it as real armor, it's incredible. Except it shrinks a ton. Leather skin pores. If you boil it, those pores shrink to nothing. So I I was just telling you yesterday, uh, pretend I had a piece this big. I stuck it into boiling water and it literally I washed it within five seconds. <laughs> it was nothing. Like that whole hunk of leather that I spent all this time cooling and making and just making perfect shrunk into a doll sized piece. But it was this hard. It was literally, you can make that sound on it by knocking on there. But I just grew it ahead at an expensive mistake. Yeah. Oh, man, that took two days to make too. It was awful. So, sure. Okay, follow up on her question. For example, if you wanted to do a brace or what weight veggie tan would you go for? Nothing less than six. Okay, so you would say you want to get at least Yeah, I would do at least six ounces. Probably and probably not more than like ten because okay. you wanna oh, be able to Because yeah. you gotta be you gotta be able to mold it. Yeah. 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 It would look awkward if you if you saw the leather it, it, it's too awkward to like put on you and it, it gets too thick, it's like <laughs> that's, a, that's a clunky thing, but like you're saying it's too thin, it'll get kind of floppy and yeah, the thinner. And when you get um 
It has to, okay, I need exactly six ounces. It doesn't come like that. It comes in like two to three. It's a range. It's yeah. a range. But, but I'm talking, it's, so, so I would want to list like six to nine or six to, and then if yeah. I needed to trim the edges down. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere in there. They also sell skivers. Skivers. <laughs> that, um, I've got a skiver. These tools. I never Stop. <laughs> Um, if you do get thick leather, it's like, well, I have this thick leather I use it for this piece, now I need to be thinner for this other thing that I want to do. You can buy these tools that basically just shave the back of it down again. Or if you even want the outside to, you know, curl in more or have a different effect, you can also use that too. It takes a long time to do, and it's weird because then you're going to have a bunch of skin dust everywhere. So it's like, yeah, it's like skin dust. Skin <laughs> dust. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> This will go. <laughs> if you're if you're doing um, if you want to do like a, a finished edge look or whatever, um, like where it's like rounded and smooth and stuff, and not just like raw leather edges on your your cuts. Um, Carrie and I both use edge bevelers. Uh, they make like little they make like these long strings and piles of like skin. That's, yeah, we call it leather spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, that's that's an optional thing. That's something that it's like, I, and I see a lot of a lot of leather pieces that don't have the bevel that's like that. There's nothing yeah. really wrong with that. It's personal preference. Um, well, being personally being a leather worker, if I see that that edge is not finished, I you get mad. She'll hang out. So mad. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look professional. It doesn't look like a finished piece. It looks just very basic. Like I'm gonna whip this together right before. So giving you a visual, if you got a hunk of leather, you cut it and you have this edge, that's it. It's just gonna look like a square. If you take this beveler, you can take that top corner off and then I use a wheel to kind of like smash all those pores together so now you have a nice clean finished edge that's not gonna have those extra fuzzies on the back because the top side of the leather is nice and smooth. The bottom is yucky. Furry. Yeah, it's furry, it's furry. Yeah. Think so that just like cleans it all up and makes it look like a professional piece. Think like uh, like a leather belt, how the edge of it is gone, right. like a flat, furry, leathery thing, but it's curved and slick, and you know that's. It, I I do that on all my stuff. Like I said, it's personal preference. She hopes out over it. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go up to somebody and be like, hey buddy, when you when you slick those edges, I'm about to slick your edges. <laughs> <laughs> I will get physical about it. <laughs> Maybe like. Um. The, another great thing, following up with the different types of leather, um, veggie leather you can mold if you get it reasonably damp, not like soaking it in, in water. Some people soak it through, but then it takes like days to dry. It's ridiculous. Um, but if you if you get it somewhat damp, you can shape it, and once it dries, it will hold that shape to a certain extent. And uh, that's one of the great things about it. So I straight for holsters, masks, uh, you know, even. But if you get too thick of leather, it won't do that. Basically, you can curve it in for like an arm bracer, but then if you want the details to yeah. like mold, it's not going to do it because it's too thick and there's nowhere for it to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, after, oh, you're fine. Um, the veggie tan leather has oils in it that when you wet it, the water will push the oils to the top and um, that takes the flex out of it to a certain extent. Also, um, kind of. If you want to soften the leather back up, you have to re-oil it. But if you just let it dry and then put a sealer coat on top of it, it actually hardens it. If you do the front and the back, it will stay stiff, and you don't have to boil it. You don't have to do any of that crazy stuff. Um, another tip to do the same thing, if you rinse your leather three times, that gets everything out, so it'll become incredibly stiff after that, too. So, you know, you rinse it, you let it dry, not, you know, sticking it under the sink and waiting for it three days for it to dry, I don't recommend that, but just getting it wet, letting it dry, getting it wet, letting it dry. Um, three separate times, that does the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Lots of Andy yeah. guys taught me that. Oh, You're okay. Andy guys. Andy guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, speaking of molding and things of that nature, what do you use to mold on? What do you use as a foam? It depends on what you're... Like if, like if you're doing a mask, you just use your face. I mean, you know, if you don't get it too wet, you won't have to sit there and hold it forever while it dries. I have a um, when I make a lot of masks, I, I have a form for that. Mm -hmm. 
Bobby. Yeah, his name's Bob. He's so creepy looking. Um, yeah. um, he's in the back of my car. He terrifies people. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> but he'll like die and everything. So I'll die my stuff on there. It is gross. <laughs> is this a styrofoam like head or is it a wood or? No, it is. It's a, it's a type of foam. Okay. But uh, I forgot. I think his name's George. If you go online. Okay. Isn't that weird? There's different names for different ones, and they have, it's, it's scary looking because they have really over exaggerated features. So he has really high cheekbones, really sunken in eyes, and you would think, like, okay, that's not going to fit any face, but it's so over exaggerated that if you put a thicker piece of leather over it, it's not going to adhere to it completely. So it's going to get a basic human shape. So it fits just about everyone, but if you use really thin leather, like, um, like a five ounce or even a four ounce, it's going to mold perfectly to it, and you're going to have a really awkward looking mold. So, just keeping that in mind, your lighter leathers will mold more perfect to your shape that you are using it. And um, for something like if you're doing a, a gun holster, um, again, veggie tan leather, you don't want to get your gun wet. A lot of people have what are called blue guns, and they're just polymer oh. casts of, of, of a lot of popular guns. But if you're doing something like, like a Nerf Maverick, mm -hmm. um, you can totally just use it as the mold. You get your leather wet. Put the maverick on there, mm -hmm. the leather over it, and just yeah. press until you know until it does that. And it won't hurt the gun. Um, if you're doing an actual gun, uh, what I did was put it in a, a Ziploc bag, and then I put a straw in it, sucked all the air out, so it was like vacuum formed. And you can also use a vacuum to do that. <laughs> Why do you yeah. use a straw? <laughs> that was my guy brain. I don't, don't judge me. <laughs> I don't tell you how to live your life. It's <laughs> like a straw in a bag. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Too late to go back. Just a minute, okay? I have to. Did you pass out? Like, no. What? It's just a plastic. <laughs> it's just a plastic chair. I wasn't deflating a mattress. <laughs> I'm seeing you just sitting there with this big bag, like, so I'm like, James, what are you doing? So after you wake up from passing out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, you obviously want to protect a, a gun that's anything made of steel because, um, you know, yeah, it's not chrome tan leather, but it's still, you don't want to give it away. Um, yeah, put it in a plastic bag, seal it, and get all the air out of it so you don't have to <laughs> And then same thing, put your leather, mold it over the gun, and just, you know, like, you can, it, it almost becomes kind of like, not clay, but like, sort of like clay, but you can't like, I don't know. Like, you know, I work with clay, it's not like clay. Well, I don't, you don't work with clay, so, <laughs> all right? <laughs> I understand what you're meaning, though, like, it, it can get very, very... Like silly putty, it's, it's kind of like silly putty when it's it's very malleable. Yeah. So you can you can press it down into the grooves and stuff, and that's how you. Yeah, get you can press. run your fingers over it, yeah. and then you can feel like the ripples in the gun. Like you can get very very detailed. Yeah. Things. Be sure your fingernails are trimmed though, otherwise you're gonna have fingernail marks in it. They won't come out ever. Um, well, you can. Well, it's depending on how deep it is. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm like you know, if you've got like what's his name, nails from uh, was it Flash Gordon? That guy. Oh, you're talking about the merciless. That's, yeah, the end of the right? I bite my fingernails and I never have that problem, so everyone, trim your fingernails. <laughs> 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 um, Brian, do to touch on what he was saying, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an object that's flat. So that's awesome. You can just easily put, you know, a piece over that and it will mold to it. Now, if you're doing something funky, like picture a tricorn hat. And you're like a pirate hat. How it has that bowl on there? That's really hard when you get those kind of designs. So what you do with leather is you have to pull it and stretch it and just do really weird, awkward things until it works for you. And it's skin, so it's different every single time. There's not like one way of being like, oh yeah, you can do this one time and it's fine. No, it's not that easy. You do have to keep playing with it until it obeys to what you want. <sighs> Yeah. It's it's very very fun to do leather. It's very tedious, but once you work with it several times, then you will understand that it, it kind of makes its own mind of what it wants to do. But you know you, that is a, a thing you do is just yeah. <laughs> you have to like pull it over your head, stretch it, put it on there, or like if you got a bowl or something, and then restretch it, put it back on. I'm sorry, what are you saying? Oh, I was gonna ask if you're like sewing your stitching pieces together, like what type of like thread or like what would you 
this is actually a good stitching. That's a good question. I'm yeah. on that. Um, what I use, um, I, I get like a, it's a sewing all or like they have chisels basically, they have the spacing set up. You can get like two, four, eight, like, um, and you basically punch holes in it. Um, they have leather needles um, of different sizes. Some people use what's a uh, wax cotton thread. Uh, some people, I use number two nylon thread because it, nylon. Yeah, it never breaks down, it's super strong. Um, and it won't hurt the leather, and the leather also won't hurt it. Okay. Um, there are some leathers that, depending on what kind of thread you use, the, the chemicals in the leather will actually eat through the thread and come back apart. Um, so, nylon thread, uh, a leather needle, they're thicker than, you know, yeah. regular sewing. You would not want to use, like, a regular sewing. No, it won't at all. Yeah. Um, I actually do a different thing than what he does. Uh, they have these little wheels with spikes on them. And there's three different settings, so you can have them closer together, further apart, or really far apart. And uh, you roll that wheel so it's already going to make an indent into your leather, and I use it all. And you just kind of like dig it from the side, pull it up, and now you have a perfect hole in there to okay. put your, your um, leather needle through. Yeah, if you don't have a machine, leather stitching is incredibly tedious. And it just takes a long time. It's, it's don't get the tool that they try to sell you. To be like, hey, it's just like a sewing machine. It's god awful. Everyone's stitching all. I almost, and then I was like, I have <laughs> one, and it just sits there. Well, like, here, set that up there with my wool daubers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That thing is atrocious. That's uh, and I hate I hate stitching. I want stuff to be together and done, so I use rivets. I also use rivets. Yeah. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes. Yeah. If you want practice, uh, Tandy sells pre-punched kits. Uh, they come with, they basically, like, there's like a, you know, a pouch or a wallet or something like that. They come with everything you need. All you do is go get it, and, I mean, you have to do your own carving, I mean, whatever, yeah. you're going to do the letter itself, but everything, the thread's there, the needle's there, and then you'll have it for the next time, because they always give you a lot. Okay. It's, that's a great way to get practice. Yeah, um, if you get one of those kits, there's several different ways of stitching, and we'll tell you how to do that. Um, I also sometimes use the wax, depending if I need a really, really, really tight fit. Okay. Um, the wax will let you pull super tight because it's, yeah. it's almost like a lubrication. Right. Okay. And it will stay. I use, um, I play hockey, and the my laces that I use is wax laces. Because once you pull it, it stays. It's not, when you release, it's not going to come back out. Okay. And it's the same thing with the thread. If you pull it, it's just going to stay right there. Okay. I need some wax there for my <laughs> I know people like do that, but it, it leaves um, waxy mid, uh, material behind. Yeah. So you have to clean that up. It's kind of yucca. Yucca. Oh, I said that. Yeah. You got problems. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? So if somebody's just getting started, where would you recommend they go other than maybe candy? information on tools, are there videos on YouTube, techniques, that sort of thing? Tandy has some great uh, videos, too. Yeah, they have the videos on site, but um, <laughs> that's the thing. Everybody does stuff differently. There are some, like, it depends on who you learn from, but there's more than like, one way to scan a cow. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you go on YouTube and you're like, you know, how do I cut out this pattern for whatever, and you can even find patterns that you can print out and use them on your leather template. So, yeah, that's, and, and that's awesome. Um, if you know somebody personally that does it, most of the time they'll be more to share information with you, unless it's very handy. <laughs> I will tell you about all the edges. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's one uh, YouTube channel I've followed that's been really good. It's Bruce Cheney Leatherworking, and his stuff is really good. And he goes into a lot of detail, and he shows kind of Everything. It's really good. Those are great. Good. Oh, good. Thank you. Those are the tiny ones. Are the best ones. Yeah, 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 I like the tiny ones. I did see one recently about leather masks, just to see like how other people do techniques, and some of them were just like, why are you doing that? I need to email you. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Um, some people, like for a mask, for example, they will make it, they will soak the entire thing, let all the air bubbles come out of it, so now you have a completely saturated piece, mold it, and then Oh, I don't feel like waiting a day. I'm going to stick it in the oven. <laughs> Why would you stick it in the oven? So, again. <laughs> again, it's skin. So, 
Would you want to go outside in like Florida heat and just let your skin bake for three days on end? Like that's going to dry you out. The same thing with leather. It's going to dry out. It's going to crack. And now you have a really stiff, uncomfortable piece that is brittle. So I don't recommend extreme heat to leather. Interesting side note, leather, because it is skin, if the sun is hitting it, it will tan it. It will tan it. Yeah. Yeah. If it's just it, like, I learned yeah. that, uh, just having rolls of it. And that's why they roll it with the skin side in, because yeah. if light hits it for long enough, especially in the like, sunlight through a window, yeah. it will turn it brown. It will. Yeah. Um, not after it's died. You're, you're fine after yeah. it's died. Yeah. Uh, you were... Uh, just you guys, to hit on templates and... You know, learning stuff and doing stuff, I, I can't um, emphasize enough. You'll save a whole ton of leather if you do it paper templates of uh, yes. pretty much everything before you attempt to do it in leather. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I always do a paper template too, and then, you know, doing a mask or an arm brace and just making sure that you just have enough. What? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead, it's fine. Go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm, like, in my house, it is not uncommon at all for me to um, walk around with, oh. <laughs> with construction paper spotters on, <laughs> and, like, brass stuck through. So your neighbors must think you're the weirdest person. Oh my god, no, it's cool because, like, our, our workspace is, like, a 400 square foot that you've seen. I know, I don't know. Uh, we've got those, the windows at the front, and we're at the top of the hill, and anybody that looks up can see us in there. I'm, like, in there walking around with my arm around. Yeah, what do you think about the front here? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> yeah, construction paper. Something heavier than, like, not just, you know, printer paper. Mm-hmm. Although you can use that too. Craft phone is great for blocking out shapes and designs because it's sort of almost acts like leather. Mm-hmm. So, whatever that's work. Yeah, it makes um, the same thickness too. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good template. Yep. Uh, Easy to cut. And you'll always have that after that paper. Obviously, if it gets, you know, flexed around too much or whatever, it'll, it'll disintegrate after a while. Yeah, uh, if I if I make a template that I like and I want to make more of it, I take some quilter's plastic and draw it on there and then cut it out. Mm-hmm. And I always have that until my kid steals it. I have a quilter on the and cut. You go to um, if you ever go to radiology and have chest X-rays and still do it on the film. Asking mm. for asking for the film that they don't use to throw out. Uh, I have a ton of it, and it's about awesome. the same. Yeah. But it's big, especially if you get to, they're big pieces. Yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. That's but they're idea. not all. The most of them are going to computer anymore. Yeah. But you might be able to scab some of stuff somewhere. Just any kind of thinner plastic. Um, a lot of times I use uh, watercolor paper. It's thick. It works. I my template. I know a guy that uses. Um, I like my women like I like watercolor paper. <laughs> what? It's <laughs> making it worse. I, know. I will tell your wife you said that. What? She's my point. She's making it worse. <laughs> You're in so much trouble. No, that's funny that you mentioned that about the X-ray film because I'm actually an X-ray tech, so I have access to that stuff all the time. I never would have thought to do that. So we don't. Hey, look, we get on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to touch on this. Um, if you draw a piece on a piece of paper, and it's like it has detail in there, or it's like you, I make holes and masks, and what I do is I draw it on a piece of paper, I wet the leather down just a little bit. You can put that piece of paper on top of it and take a pencil or a pen and then go over that piece of paper. Now what that's going to do is going to leave an impression onto that leather just a little bit. So even if you mess up, it's not a big deal, but you can see that exact image onto that piece of leather. Without actually marking on the leather. Right. They do mark on leather with a pen or something. They do make, um, what are those, uh, the pencils that you can get at Tandy where they wipe away? But always do it on the back side. Yeah, the back side. Yeah. Unless you're going to bevel the edge off, in which case you don't have to worry about it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's it, like if you're marking on the front of the leather on the on the, the skin side, not the flesh. The, the back of it, the fuzzy side, they call it the flesh side. The other side is the grain side. That's the side you're going to carve into. That's the side you're gonna, you know, dye and all that. Um, but yeah, that, that's uh, if you're beveling your edges off, you can totally mark on the front because when you run the beveler over, it will. It will